The dentin is a hard tissue that forms the bulk of the tooth. It is similar to bone but is slightly harder, although softer than enamel. Dentin is elastic and provides protection in that it prevents the fracture of the overlying enamel. The dentin has numerous dentinal tubules that run across its length. Each dentinal tubule houses the cytoplasmic process of an odontoblast. Now it has to be noted that an odontoblastic process is also called tomb's fiber. Also, don't get confused with tomb's process and tomb's fiber. You see, the tomb's process is the distal extension of an amuloblast that is responsible for the secretion of enamel, whereas the tomb's fiber is the cytoplasmic process of the odontoblast present within dentinal tubules in the fully formed dentin. The organic matrix of dentin comprises mainly type 1 collagen with fractions of type 3 and type 5 collagen. Now, this comprises 90% of the organic material. The rest of the organic material is composed of dentin phosphoprotein, dentin xyloprotein, dentin xylophosphoprotein, osteonectin, osteopontin, and GLA protein. So these proteins make up the non-collagenous proteins. Together, they make up around 20% of dentin and along with water comprise 30% of dentin. The rest of the dentin, that is around 70%, is made of inorganic material composed of calcium hydroxyapatite crystals. <laughs> The orontoblastic processes are housed in canaluculi called dentinal tubules. Now these dentinal tubules run or traverse the entire thickness of the dentin, extending from the inner dentin to the DEJ coronally and cementum dentin junction in the root portion of the tooth. A dentinal tubule is doubly curved and follows an S-shaped or sigmoid course. Now these curves are called primary curvatures. Dentinal tubules show numerous branches terminally towards the dentinoenamel junction and the cementum dentin junction. Now these are called terminal branches. Tubules also show lateral branches along their length. Now terminal branching of dentinal tubules is more prominent in the root dentin than in the coronal dentin. The course of a dentinal tubule is not straight. Each tubule shows minute curvatures or minor kinks throughout its length. And these small minor kinks are called secondary curvatures. And finally, dentinal tubules have a larger diameter towards the pulpal surface. The dentinal tubule housing the odontoblast process is also known to have a thin periodontoblastic space. And this space is thought to be filled with dentinal fluid. Now the importance of dentinal fluid would be dealt with in another video explaining the theories behind dentin sensitivity. The peritubular dentin is that portion of the dentin surrounding the dentinal tubule. Ironically, the peritubular dentin does not actually surround the tubule, but rather lines the inner wall of the dentinal tubule. Hence, it may be more appropriately termed intratubular dentin. The periodontoblastic space in the dentinal tubule exists between the peritubular dentin and the odontoblastic process. The peritubular dentin is more mineralized by at least 5-12% to than the intertubular dentin. The intertubular dentin forms the main portion of the dentin and is found between the dentinal tubules. It mainly consists of type 1 collagen fibrils and is less mineralized than the peritubular dentin. Now the dentin as we know it is actually called primary dentin and primary dentin is formed before root completion. This forms the bulk of the dentin and is of two types, mantle and circumpulpal dentin. Mantle dentin is the first formed dentin which is 15 to 20 microns thick and is confined to the upper layers near the enamel. The rest of the dentin is called circumpulpal dentin. The mantle dentin layer is less mineralized than the circumpulpal dentin. Now the mantle dentin matrix comprises mainly of type 1 collagen and partly 1 cos fibers comprising type 3 collagen. 1 cos fibers are large diameter collagen fibers. In fact, they are larger than most collagen fibers in the rest of the dentin. The circumpulpal dentin forms the bulk of the primary dentin and it's more mineralized than the mantle dentin. And finally, there is also a small layer of what is called as pre-dentin that is unmineralized and situated below the circumpulpal dentin but just above the odontoblast cell bodies. Secondary dentin is formed after root completion and this is a narrow zone of dentin near the pulp especially near the roof and floor of the pulp chamber. It appears like the primary dentin, though it contains fewer but regularly arranged tubules. 
there is a characteristic bend in the zone where the primary and the secondary dentin meet now deposition of secondary dentin near the pulp especially near the floor and the roof of the pulp chamber could cause a reduction in the size of the pulp chamber this is called pulp recession Interglobular dentin is usually found in the circumpulpal dentin just below the mantle dentin. Interglobular dentin are areas of hypomineralized dentin. So what happens is during globular mineralization the globules or concentric masses of calcification also called calcospherites enlarge and fuse with adjacent globules. When these globules fail to coalesce or fail to fuse there are hypomineralized zones in between these globules and hence these zones are called interglobular dentin. Dentinal tubules freely pass through the interglobular dentin and interglobular dentin is usually found in teeth of people with vitamin D deficiency or a fluoride excess. When root dentin is viewed under transmitted light there is a zone of granularity in the dentin just below the cementum. Now this granular layer is called tomb's granular layer. The granularity of this layer keeps increasing from the cemento enamel junction as we move to the apex of the tooth. Tomb's granular layer is believed to be due to the coalescing and the looping of terminal branches of the dentinal tubules. This layer of granular dentin is also hypomineralized when compared to the circumpulpal dentin. 